God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Kingdom and You with Apostle Abraham. And we know that you're going to be blessed in today's show. How do we know that? Because the Word of God is coming out. And wherever the Word is preached, we can expect faith to come. Whenever faith comes, we can expect victory to come. In Jesus' name. So listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to be praying for you at the end of the show. I'm believing God with you for God to meet your needs. But I want to be teaching you something very important here today. I want to be teaching you about answering your call and fulfilling your ministry. Answering your call and fulfilling your ministry. Now, I always encourage you that when I teach that you get your Bibles in front of you and you get a pen and a notebook, and you pay attention, you listen attentively, because God is going to do something amazing in your life. Now, part of this teaching is contained in this book called uh, uh, The Believer's Training Handbook. And this is what we use for our Bible school. And this really, uh, what I like to call it, is a complete teaching guide from Genesis to Revelation. You can get your copy anywhere on the internet. Just Google Abraham S. Raja Books, and you can buy it in electronic version. Or you can also get it in a hard copy delivered to your doorstep. Amen. Just get your credit cards ready and they'll take your order for you. Amen. Now, Colossians 4 verse 17 means, um, says this, it says, Say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received from the Lord that you may fulfill it. All right. That's one of our foundation scriptures we're going to be taking. It says, take heed and tell Archippus. Now, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the Colossian church. He's saying there's someone named Archippus there and tell him that he must receive uh, this message, which is that he must fulfill his ministry. The NIV says, see to it that you complete your ministry. And then the NLT says, be sure to carry out your ministry. Now, what is this ministry thing and what is this calling thing and uh, why do we find ourselves in situations where uh, uh, we are called by God in order to do the ministry that he has for us? Well, it's very simple, really. When God calls you, it simply means that he wants to use you in another way, uh, in any other way that he may deem fit. All right. Some, sometimes when we talk about ministry and calling, people think about preaching and they think about going and evangelizing or going on to mission fields and, and going to different places. But what we are saying now is that calling and ministry is really any way in which God wants to use you. All right. Now, what does this mean? This simply means, in fact, the word ministry actually means service. So when you're in ministry, you are in service. To minister is to serve. Amen. Whether you are the greatest of the ministers of God or you're the least of them, you are serving Jesus Christ in some way or another. Amen. So, I want you today to get ready to say, God, if you've got a calling for my life, not if, <laughs> God, you've got a calling for my life and I want to fulfill it. I want to do whatever it is that you have sent for me to do down here on earth. Because when I get up there, I know you're going to be asking me some questions. All right? So, we want you to focus your attention. We want you to put your thoughts. We want you to use up your energy. We want you to direct your entire life and aligning yourself with what God has in store for you. All right? Because, you know, you're never going to walk into the promises of God until you're walking in the will of God. Now, the will of God, I'm not, just not talking about, you know, staying sin-free and, and doing so forth and so forth. When walking in the will of God, I'm talking about you making a decision to say, God has called me as a teacher, or God has called me as an usher, as a banker, as a lawyer, as an accountant, as a doctor. God has called me as a, a, an engineer. Whatever it is, God has called me as a camera person. God has called me as a, an, uh, uh, um, into sound, whatever the case may be, whatever it is that God has called you into, and you know that God has called you into it, what we're trying to say to you is this, make sure you reach its full potential. Make sure you fulfill it. Make sure you get to a place and say, God, am I doing it right? Am I doing it enough? If not, God, direct me in your ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't become a businessman if God has called you as a preacher. And don't become a preacher if God has called you as a businessman. <laughs> because only he in his divine wisdom and in his authority can determine what you are called to be. Hallelujah. Now, Paul, we spoke about the instruction in Colossians that Paul gave to someone named Archippus to see to it that he fulfills his ministry. The same instruction was given to Timothy by the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy verse 4 and 5. 
And this is what he said. He said, Full, fully carry out the ministry which God has given you. Now he goes on to tell Paul to become an evangelist, uh, Timothy to become an evangelist. So really what we're saying to you is that the calling is simply any role or capacity that God wants to use you. Okay? Any role or capacity that God wants to use you. For some of you, you may find that the role that God wants to use you is in your career or your job place. Amen. Is this making sense? So you can be a policeman, you can be a nurse, you can work in a bank teller. But if God is saying to you, this is where I have called you to effect change, then what we're simply trying to say to you is that that's the place you need to be in. Because when God visits, remember when he visited Adam in the garden, he said, where are you? Because you're not in the place I, found, uh, I left you. So you need to make sure that you are asking God, you're seeking God and saying, God, I want to fulfill my ministry. I want to answer this calling that you have for my life. Hallelujah. All right. Now, for example, you know, we like to say this, you know, for example, uh, whatever role that God has called you into, if it is God that has called you into it, you need to make sure you complete it. This is what we mean when we say fulfill the ministry. We're speaking about completing your ministry, okay? Another word for ministry or for calling is divine destiny, is a mandate, or is an assignment, okay? You've heard people say, I've got an assignment on my life. Everyone's got an assignment on their life. Everyone has got a mandate from God. Everyone has got a function that they need to do in order for God uh, to be glorified in their lives, all right? So this message is really meant to provoke you. It's meant to challenge you and say, hold on, are you more than what you are? Has God called you to do? Now you're saying, but I work from eight to five and I'm tired when I come home and so on. But you don't know when you come home if God needs you to be casting out some devils or if God needs you to be counseling someone, if God needs you to be praying for the sick. You don't know that. So what we're trying to say to you, in fact, think about it. The entire 24 hours belong to God. Now you need to use them how he intends for you to use them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, some people say, no, I want to be an apostle, a prophet, a, a pastor, a teacher. No, 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 no. Don't be any of those things if God's not called you to be. Because whatever God calls you to do, God will anoint you. He'll empower you. And he'll also provide the resources and he'll also open up the doors. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'll give you an example. Uh, both my wife and I are lawyers, right? And, uh, and what I began to realize is that I needed to leave law in order for me to concentrate on the ministry of, of preaching and teaching the Word of God. But, uh, and I found that I have become successful in terms of understanding what God wants me to do. But my wife is a lawyer and uh, she does that very well. She does that very well. Now, I can't tell her to go and leave her law career and start writing books and start doing the things of God and preaching and teaching on TV like I'm doing now because it's not what God has called her to do for now. Is this making sense to you? And I can't go start going to court every day of my life and, and representing clients even though I'm qualified to do that because that's not what God wants me to do every day of my life. Similarly with you, you've got to find out what God has called you to do. What is this assignment that God has for you? What makes you you? What makes you unique? What solution have you been called to bring to the problems of this world? Amen. Now, you know, throughout, uh, throughout Scripture, throughout Scripture, one thing is very plain. God uses man. You know, God doesn't work with a crowd. God works with one man. That's why even when we read in, in, in the Bible, we speak about certain men that come to mind. David, Elijah, Elisha, uh, Solomon, Abraham, uh, Joseph, Daniel. We read of men, one man or one woman making a difference, whether it be Ruth or Esther. We read of people making a difference. In other words, God is still looking for a person to use on earth. He has not changed. Because God will speak to that individual to effect and bring major changes, whether it's a department that you're working in, in a company, or whether, it's a, whether it's, a, it's a team that you're working with in ministry, it doesn't make a difference. God will use a person who is available. Hallelujah. You know what he said to Ezekiel? He said, throughout Jerusalem, I sought a man, I sought a man that would stand in the gap. Amen. 
In other words, God is saying, if I can just have one person that is available, one person that is willing for me to use them, watch me do miracles through that one person. Hallelujah. So will you be that one person that God is calling today? Hmm? Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and just say, God, look no further. Look no further. You know, like Isaiah, we can respond to God and say, send me. When God is speaking, he says, whom shall I send? Just say, God, I want you to send me. Send me. I want you to stay tuned because when we come back uh, from, this com from this break, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about understanding your purpose for living. Understanding the purpose for which God has called you. And then throughout the series, we're going to be speaking about practical steps in other words, uh, uh, things that you can do every day to find yourself walking in the things that God has got in store for you. Amen. I'll see you in just a little bit. Well, we're back and we're talking about walking in the purposes that God has for you. Uh, the title of today's message is Answering Your Calling or Fulfilling Your Ministry. Answer your call, fulfill your ministry. What we're saying, we say God has got a predetermined purpose for every single human being on earth. In fact, there is nothing God creates that has no purpose. There is nothing God does that has no meaning. There is nothing that God will produce that will not ultimately affect a, a more general a broader scope of his creation. You, as a human being, the highest form of God's creation, the most beloved, one he has actually poured himself into, God has got a calling for you. Amen. Stop feeling useless. Stop feeling worthless. Uh, stop feeling like you don't matter. You know what you do, but you need to understand that you matter to God. But you need to start walking and seeking out, God, what have you called me to do? Remember, we said that word ministry or calling simply means service or any way in, God, in which God has called you. Don't limit it to preaching or to evangelizing or to missionaries. Calling is simply whatever assignment that God has for you. For some of you, God has called you just to be a good mother and to look after your children. Uh, but we're going to begin to teach you that even while being a good mother, be prepared to heal the sick, be prepared to cast out devils, be prepared to, to, to teach the word of God and so forth and so forth. But when we're talking about the calling and the purpose of God, we're saying the majority of your day, the majority of your time, what has God ordained for you to do? What has he empowered for you to do? You know, you may find that sometimes even though you're going to switch a career or you're going to switch a discipline or you're going to switch a, something that you're studying from school, there's that one thing that's going to consistently keep coming back to you that God has called you to do. And I urge you to find it and do it with all of your heart. Amen. 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 Now, listen, that word, uh, we spoke about just before we went to the break, how God will ask for one man in order for him to do something great. You know that he called Moses to deliver three million people. Uh, he called 12 people to turn the world upside down uh, in order for him to preach the new gospel of the new covenant. So even you, what does God want to do uh, through you in Jesus' name? Amen. You know, when we talk about, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me explain to you this way, you know. You don't, uh, you don't take a DVD player, you know, we have DVD players now, and you start putting a cassette into it. <laughs> it's not going to work because it was not built for that purpose. Amen. Similarly with you, perhaps some of the frustrations you're going through with life is because you are trying to fit a role, uh, a career, a job that God has not called you into doing. Now you say, how will I know? What God has called me to do, and that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at practical steps to enable you to walk in the things that God has got in store for you, uh, particularly the calling and the purpose of God. You know, I want to just quote for you some of these uh, incredible, incredible statements that come from the Bible of men and women of God that realize that, no, hold on, I've got a purpose in my life. 
you know, I remember myself, I used, to, I used to be in university and I used to be drinking and I used to be partying and I used to be just living my life the way I wanted it to live and I'd just be messing around with school. But the day I realized that God has called me for something, the day I, and I wasn't really sure what it was, because as we're going to teach you that it is progressive, you know, God won't give it to you all at once because he wants you to keep looking for it and searching for it. But the day I realized that, you know, God has called me for something amazing, something great. I had a sense inside of me that, you know what, there's something that is going to affect nations. There's something that's going to affect people. There's something that's going to affect uh, uh, somebody that's hurting, broken, sick. And, and this when I made the decision, I'm going to change. I'm going to seek out God's will and purpose for my life. So from then, every instruction God gave me, he said, leave your country. I left my country. He said, leave your career. I left my career because I'm hungry to know the purpose and the will of God for my life. And it's statements like this that encourage me so much. You know, Jesus in, in John 18, 37, he said, for this reason I have come. You know, is that defining moment, that statement that encapsulates, that, that defines what Jesus Christ meant when he says, uh, you know, I have come for this very purpose. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul himself said, one thing I do, one thing I do, this one thing I do. You know, he was trying to say, maybe I don't get too many things right. Maybe I don't understand the mysteries of the universe and mathematics and science and chemistry, but this one thing I do, I'm going to follow after the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Esther. Esther as well. Uh, you know the book of Esther. Uh, the Bible speaks about uh, her saying when it was time to enter the king's throne, uh, throne room and um, she was at the risk of dying. She said, if I perish, I perish. Hallelujah. And Mordecai, her uncle, uh, spoke to her and said, you know what, if you don't rescue the Jews now, deliverance will come elsewhere. But who knows if you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this? What am I saying to you? God is speaking to your heart right now. He's saying, what if you've come to my kingdom for such a time as this? I need you in government. I need you in politics. I need you in education. I need you in businesses and finances. I need you uh, ushering in the church. I need you singing in the choir. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you because I can't do this thing without you and I working together. Hallelujah. Will you participate today? Will you say, God, whatever it is that you've got in store for me, I want it. I want it. I'm willing to give up everything to see you move with power in my life. I'm willing to give up everything for me to eventually say like Jesus, for this reason I have come. You know, Job said something very important when he was going through his trials. He said, though God slay me, yet shall I trust him. Amen. Uh, the psalmist David um, said, he said, one thing have I desired. Just one thing have I desired that I may dwell in the house of God and inquire in his temple. Amen. Do you desire God's presence like that? Just to inquire of him, say, what have you called me to do? What is it that you want me to be used as? You remember over in Jeremiah chapter 18, God told Jeremiah, he said, I want you to go to the porter's house. Yeah. And when he got there, Jeremiah saw the porter uh, beginning to turn the wheel and beginning to form a piece of clay. And God spoke to Jeremiah and he said, how I wish my people were like this clay. If they could just allow me to shape them and to do what I need to do in their lives so I can pour myself into them. Amen. I'm telling you something right now. God wants to pour himself into you so he can pour out of you and begin to affect people. Begin to see people saved. Come to Jesus. Begin to see demons leave when you pray for people. Begin to see uh, yourself give words of wisdom and encouragement to someone that's broken and down. Uh, begin to, to see people get healed when you lay hands on them. You know, God has called you for something. Amen. And I want you to dedicate the rest of your life, beginning today, to say, God, I'm going to answer your call. I'm going to answer your call. I'm going to fulfill the ministry you have for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Another woman of destiny uh, is a lady named Ruth. Now, you remember uh, Ruth was, uh, was uh, Naomi's uh, daughter-in-law, and her husband had just died. And then and, and she felt destiny calling her. She was a Moabitess. She was not an Israelite. But Naomi was going over into Israel because her sons had died. And she said to Naomi, she clung to him, to her, in fact. She said, your God shall be my God and your people my people. 
Amen. I tell you something, destiny does not call on our doors every day. Hallelujah. And God is using this message on television right now to call you. God is using this television message right now to say, I want to use you. I want to use you. But you're saying, God, I'm broken. But he says, I want to use you. But you're saying, God, I'm a sinner. I can't let go. He says, I want to use you. But you're saying, God, you don't know how many abortions I've had. I want to use you. But God, I've slept with this person. That person says, I want to use you. Hallelujah. He says, God, you don't know how many things I've done wrong. But God says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I want to use you. But God, I can't speak very well. He says, I want to use you. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you answer the call today? Will you make Jesus Christ the center, the be it all of your life? I know you are. I know you're making that decision really, really seriously today. Amen. Now, but you're saying to me, but, but Apostle, you know, I go to church. I give my tithes. I sing the praise and worship. But that's not all. God wants all of you, not some of you. Hallelujah. God doesn't want you just as a church member. He likes that, of course. But God is saying, I'm calling you to so much more. I'm calling you to so much more. You know, the entire, entire message of my life has always been this one thing. Go and prepare my people by telling them I've got a call for them. Go and raise up my people, train them to walk in their calling. That has been my entire life. It defines my ministry. My ministry, my assignment from God is to bring out your assignment. My vision is to bring out your vision from God. Hallelujah. I know you'll feel the Spirit of God beginning to speak to you. I know you feel something inside of you churning and yearning for so much more right now. Some of you are in tears are saying, God, I want this calling. I want this thing that you have for me. Hallelujah. Amen. But let me tell you something, it begins with Jesus Christ as Lord. If you're not saved, just ask him, just say, Jesus, save my soul. Save my soul. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, we've come to the, to the end of today's broadcast. But I want you to come next week because I'm going to tell you about the key steps to walking in your calling. I'm just seeing how much I need to teach you from next week. But listen to me. I want to pray for you. If you're sick in your body, be healed in Jesus' name. If there's a devil, a demon troubling you right now, be delivered, be set free. Let my people go that they may serve the Lord my God in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for meeting people at the point of their need, Father. Thank you for helping someone in need of a financial miracle today in Jesus' mighty name. There are people watching you, uh, believing you for education, God. I pray you open doors in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, write to us. Let us know what the show is doing for you uh, in Jesus' name, amen. We've come to the end, and this is the Apostle Abraham S. Raja reminding you the kingdom is in you.